Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Review. Today, we are taking a look at Bubba Wallace's 2021 uh, Talladega first career win, uh, sponsored by McDonald's. But the reason I say sponsored by McDonald's is because, for those of you who didn't know, there was kind of a long, or was, a long-standing curse with McDonald's and them not getting a car to victory lane since, like, I want to say, like, the 90s? With Jimmy Spencer, maybe? That means they went through sponsorships with Bill Elliott. Um, God, who was it in the early 2000s? I'm trying to remember. It was Bill Elliott for a while. Then there was uh, somebody else from 2001 to 2005. Uh, Casey Kane after 2005. So 2006, Casey Kane comes in. He was sponsored by them for a couple of years. Then they jumped around between Jamie McMurray, Kyle Larson. Uh, I don't remember if they were on one Pablo Montoya's car at any point. Um, trying to, I don't think they were. I know they were for sure on... Um, they were for sure on Jamie McMurray's car, um, so that's why I, I know for sure that was one of them, but I think that might have been the extent of it was uh, they went to Chip Ganassi Racing and just, they never got their car into victory lane, and there were so many close opportunities. Casey Kane dominates at Bristol in 2007, Carl Edwards ends up beating him in the end. Uh, Kyle Larson at Chicago, I mean, right there has a shot, just didn't make it work. Alex Bowman gets his first career win. There's, there's so many potential times. I mean, Bill Elliott in the 90s multiple times had a chance for win. Never got a win in that 94 car. Like, just wild. And so, yeah, that, that curse is finally broken. But let's go ahead and take a look at the car now that I've rambled on long enough. Um, we'll start with our box. Standard Elite box. Nothing crazy to see. Uh, production number one of 865 Elites. So very cool. Bunch of them made, not surprising. It's a Talladega win, that's always a help. First career win for a driver, that helps. And Bubba Wallace, uh, polarizing to some, but he has got a lot of fans too. I mean, um, you know, obviously the 2020 incident has come and gone, and I think, I think for the most part, that's out of a lot of people's minds after, especially after his win at Kansas, the whole noose incident, which was frankly not his fault in any way, shape, or form. I don't know why that, you know, why that got spread around, but anyway, nonetheless, I, I feel that. You know, his actions at Las Vegas are the only thing that really are a big black eye on him at the moment. And, hey, he's going to have to live with it. So, uh, But anyway, here you go. We got Bubba Wallace, Yellowwood 500 winner, Talladega, Alabama, October 3rd, 2021. And uh, it was a rain shortened race. So um, as much as everyone likes to say, like, oh, it doesn't matter how you win them, it does matter a little bit in terms of, um, you know, proving that you're you can whoop them. And that was the nice thing about Kansas this year is he, he whooped them. He whooped everybody, man. Uh, here you can see Yellowwood 500 winner. You can see time of the race, uh, two hours and 23 minutes. Uh, they only got 117 total laps in, so 300 miles. It's actually essentially an Xfinity race. Uh, five cautions for 27 laps. He led five of those laps, and it was a rain-shortened race under caution. Comes with a race win sticker here, and I have the official event pin from the Yellowwood 500, October 3rd, 2021. Um... All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the car here. Uh, oddly enough, for it being a rain delay, it's a, or a rain shortened race, it's a really good looking car. Uh, we'll start on the left front. You can see a little bit of the buildup right there on the nose of the car on the left side. Uh, then you can see we got some brake dust and stuff there on the left front wheel. Um, this is actually a different paint scheme from the normal McDonald's scheme where the yellow lines were going down the side and stuff. I actually think this one looks a lot better. Um, having kind of a plain white background behind the 23 instead of a bunch of yellow lines, I think really helps it. Uh, you can see kind of the sesame seed sesame seed style going from the skirt to the back end here so um, I think just cleaning up so it wasn't didn't seem so busy I think that really helped this paint scheme out because it really looked good uh, you can see we got McDonald's Columbia Dr. Pepper DoorDash Root Insurance a lot of good sponsors there you can see a little burger up there on the C post Bubba Wallace on the name rail also, we do have Wallace across the windshield banner there. It's not yellow because he wasn't in the playoffs. He wasn't this year either, but his car was, so kind of kind of there. And that's the cool thing is I, I got to see him win that other race, so I, I'm, I don't know. It's pretty cool to get to see him uh, whoop the field. I mean, you know, this one, rain shortened, and it's a super speedway, so those always have kind of an asterisk of, well, yeah, you won it, but it's not the same as this, you know. But when you go out at Kansas and you just simply whoop the field, hey, there's no argument on that one, and that's what I love about it is that uh, no more of the, oh, he can only win under caution, only win under rain. Nope, those are gone. And for those of you or those people out there that say he only won because it was Kurt's car, that was actually his car from the spring. That was the 23 car from the spring just re-stickered with the 45 number on it. Uh, roof, lap, roof laps do deploy there. Um, and then you go to the back of the car here, you can see we still got the sesame st seed style back there. And you can see a little bit around that Toyota from the bump drafting. You can kind of see that sticker. There's a rectangular sticker there. That was kind of a slip tape they would use to let it, the bumpers kind of not stick together. Uh, that was to help keep people from getting turned out of the pack. 
back. So you can kind of see where that tape starts on this end and where it ends on this end. So uh, we do have my rewards on the deck lid there, DIN 497. Uh, we can pop that open on the... Well, you can pop it open and look at the uh, fuel tr or the fuel cell and and the fuel tubes and stuff, but unfortunately, you can't really see it because I don't have good lighting. Uh, on to the right side, though, we do have a little buildup here on the right rear um, fender. You can see some of that rubber buildup, sesame seed bun-looking decal texture. I don't know what you want to call it, um, but yeah, it kind of wraps around and goes here. Uh, there you can see number twenty-three, a couple little marks up here uh, on the, the right side as well. There's the tape for the jack post, and then the rivets along the skirt. You can see that little black spot on the skirt. They just put that there to prevent it from looking all beat up and burned up by the end of the race. And then you can see on the nose here, a little fine rubber buildup. So you can see on the left side, just very fine. It's not super thick, not super splotchy, just, you know, a, a lot of like little grains almost, not not big chunks. Uh, and then you got the McDonald's arches there as well. And then the grill opening, you can see not a lot of tape on there, uh, especially for a Talladega race. So, um, yeah, so that is our... Um, our our car detail. Now let's go ahead and see if we can get a look at the engine. I'm going to go ahead and poke open the hood here. Very good tight fitting hood right now. Um, I'm almost tempted not to open it, but that's not how this channel works. We open hoods at this channel and we look at the engines inside. There you can see it, the red TRD valve covers. You can see we do have the radiator up front, a couple of belts, air filter, um, Oh, I'm just going to look. I don't see a spot for the uh, plug wires. Kind of neat. So maybe these are different valve covers from what they had before, but you, I don't see a spot for the plug wires for each individual, um, you know, the plug wires they make for these Toyotas um, or for these Elites. They used to have them in 2017. So not actually sure where the uh, plug wires would go, but um, you can actually see through the base of the car here. You can see up, the, up through the hood. Um, so you can see that detail there. We got our exhaust pipes, drive shaft back here, functioning rear suspension. You can see it bouncing there, and a little bit of a functioning rear suspension front suspension. It's very low, so it's not a lot of wiggle on it. You can see you do have pivoting front wheels. Uh, we got our exhaust transmission, and you can see those pivoting wheels there um, as well. So overall, I would say this car is definitely a must-have for any of the Bubba Wallace fans, or if you're a guy that like me that likes to get guys' first career wins. I always think that's pretty cool to get somebody's first win. Uh, regardless of um, how they ended up coming across it. So I will have a couple of Bubba cars in my collection between this one and the Kansas win. Uh, also, I still have a couple of others, um, but these are going to be definitely two of my, my absolute favorites. So highly recommend for anybody out there looking for, uh, you know, kind of which what would be a cool 2021 car to get. Obviously, Larson won a bunch of them. Um, but I'm telling you, the 23 car, it's just first win for the 2311 as an organization. Just so many unique things about this car that, and on top of that, it's just a good looking car. I mean, honestly, this is way better than that other McDonald's scheme. So highly recommend it. But uh, anyway, guys, that'll pretty much wrap up the video. Uh, you can find this at rasdiecast.com. Use the promo code RACECRAZE at checkout anytime you're over there. Um, gets yourself a nice bonus and a kind of a thank you for stopping by the site. Uh, but other than that, this has been Race Craze. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next Diecast Review.